Mocha's Adjust Track module is designed to deliver rock solid planar tracking results with minimal work. In this tutorial, I will show you how the Adjust Track tools found in all versions of Mocha are used to correct tracks that drift. This shot is ideal for showing what Adjust Track can do. It's a grainy day for night shot on a low res camera. Because planar tracking looks for texture that changes over time, the tracked surface corners can sometimes drift over long shots or when there are very quick movements. Sometimes reflections, shadows, or occlusions can produce inferior results, just like this. In Mocha, we can use the Adjust Track module to give us a second level of keyframing to fix bad or sloppy tracks. The Adjust Track module uses four corner pin transforms to correct your track based on four reference points. You must be able to see your reference points throughout the shot for them to be effective, though you may get away with using points that are partially occluded at various points in your timeline. These reference points do not have to line up with the surface tool, but that can help the artist if they have to make manual adjustments and lose sight of the reference points. To get started, we will use our X-spline to draw a shape around this screen, making sure to avoid the reflections by using Add to X-spline to subtract the reflection on the screen. Then, we will align our surface tool to the screen edges as well as we can. Now we hit Track Forwards. Notice how once the track is complete, we have quite a few pixels of drift on our screen from the beginning to the end of the shot. We typically use the grid tool shown here, or an inserted graphic to evaluate our track. In this case, I will use a graphic by selecting it from the Insert drop-down menu available inside of Mocha Pro. All other versions of Mocha can use the grid tool. This is where Adjust Track comes into play. Let's scroll through our timeline until we find a nice sharp frame and make sure the corners of the surface tool are placed perfectly. In this shot, that happens to be the first frame. Now we simply hop over to the Adjust Track tab and we can start placing reference points. Once you select the Adjust Track tab, a keyframe with four reference points is created. You should be on your desired master frame before selecting the Adjust Track tab. The reference points can then be positioned on distinctive features that you are confident you can find again elsewhere in the shot so that any drift in the track can be easily seen and corrected. As a quick tip, you can use Enable Brightness Scaling by clicking on the sun icon right here and brightening up your shot so that you can see corners without affecting the overall tracking data. When you begin to move a newly created reference point, you will notice the dashed lines connecting all of the reference points together. These lines change in color to represent the quality of positioning of any given reference point. Green is good, red is bad, and yellow could be better. For best results, keep the reference points far enough away from one another that the plane made by these dashed lines does not collapse in on itself. Now use the Set Master All button to cement your reference frames as the master frames. As you play through the sequence, you can manually adjust the position of each point as drift occurs. Note that these adjust keyframes are interpolated across the track, so you do not have to do this on every frame. This is a great time to turn on the thumbnail tool as it will show you even minute drift, and it is usually on by default in the Adjust Track tab. If your track is correct, your reference points should line up throughout the shot. If you see a reference point drifting or wobbling as you scroll through your timeline, that will indicate the track is drifting. Look for the arcs of the animation for the drift, find the frame where the drift is the worst, and move the reference points back to the position it had in the master frame, and the track will automatically be adjusted based on your correction. This track is the most off at the end of the shot, so I will start my correction there, and if I'm lucky, I won't have to make any more adjustments on any other frames. You can also use the Auto key instead of manually adjusting your reference points, which will do its best to match the pixels in this frame to the reference frame. Sometimes for dark or grainy shots like this, manual adjustments are better. The same animation principles you use when you rotoscope are useful for Adjust Track too. When you see a drift, carefully cycle through the timeline and look for where the motion starts to change direction. A frame before this, adjust your drift, and then go halfway between your master frame and the adjusted frame to check any further drift. If you keep working by checking halfway between each keyframe you set, 
you will reduce the amount of keyframes required. If you end up with adjustment keyframes on a large amount of frames, it may be better to try and retrack the track. Adjust Track was created to help reduce small anomalies and fixed drift. If you are fixing every second keyframe, it probably means you should retrack with a different shape or different settings. So that means that while Adjust Track is primarily used for eradicating drift, it is usually not practical to use it to remove jitter. To remove jitter, you need to troubleshoot your track by adjusting percentage of pixels values or changing the shape you are using to track. So here is our original drifting track due to reflections and grain. Here is our Adjust Track module corrected track. And here's our final inserted screen composite. To find out more, be sure to deep dive into our Mocha documentation. And be sure to visit us at www.borisfx.com.